All right, everyone, this is what we're painting on this video today. I am titling this Christmas Candle, and it's on my star ornament surface. And uh, this was so fast that you could just paint a bunch of these up for Christmas gifts, tags on bags. Um, it's just a, a fun, fun, quick idea of something to make. And I painted the front and the back. Now, on the back, I stamped um, this saying on here, which is a copyright stamp, so it will not be included in the packet. But you can use any kind of stamp that you want with a Christmas saying, or you can paint this candle on both sides. Um, we used our Glamour Dust, our bling, 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 which I love at Christmas. We used it down here, too. So um, this is just going to be a project that I think you're really going to like. So I can't wait to paint it with you. Let's get started. All right, so I've got my star ornament surface here painted white. And I just used a, a dampened two inch foam roller to paint it, but you can use an artist sponge to paint it as well, uh, a dampened artist sponge. Something that will put the paint on very, very quickly so you don't have to take a lot of time to uh, get those base coats on. First, you want to apply a coat of multi-purpose sealer and then your two coats of just white paint. Okay, so now we're going to take our compass and we're going to uh, put our banding, our, our lines for our peppermint around the outside. So I've got it just uh, shy of a quarter of an inch, but you could make it a full quarter of an inch if you want. And now we're gonna hold the compass up here so we don't accidentally move the pencil out. So you wanna hold it here, you wanna hold it straight up and down, and just let this edge of the compass um, roll along the edge of the the surface and we're going to go all the way around from point to point we just need to know where our you know where to put our peppermint at and we want to do both sides all right keeping the compass straight up and down just letting the outside edge follow the shape and it doesn't matter if our points don't touch we know where we're going to and how wide we need to be okay so that is our first step. So now we want to paint our peppermint in here. Let me erase this line right there. We'll come back and erase our pencil lines that we put on there. Um, my compass, I just put a regular paper mate pencil in it that I can roll the lead down so my pencil always stays in the same place. I just have to adjust my lead on it. Um, that just seemed the easiest way for me to, instead of constantly moving my pencil up and down, the uh, compass. All right, so we're going to start with some red on here, Santa red for our stripes. And I'm using a one round brush and just start applying your stripes. A little bit of water in my brush here. And we're just you can you can make them go like in an S S kind of shape where they start here curve over and come here or you can just do round ones okay um, on this previous one that I did I did kind of S ones I think on this one I'm gonna do more round ones make it look like it's curving around like this okay so you just make as many on here as you want this is Santa Red. You might have to apply two coats on here. But we're just going to go all the way around the outside edge on both sides. So I'll do a few more here. They're all done the same. And I'll go off camera and finish the rest of it and both sides. Okay, so we're just going to continue on all the way. Okay, I've got my red stripes done. So for our second stripe, we're going to use leaf green. And for this one, I'm going to use a 10-0 liner. So whatever liner that you like, we're just going to go along and put a green, a thin green stripe on the right side of every red 
stripe. Now you can put two green stripes. You can put a green stripe on each side. You can come back with another narrow red stripe if you don't want any green stripes on the side. But I really think the green, green stripes definitely make it look more Christmassy. And you have to thin your paint down with some water so it will come off of uh, your liner brush very easily. Try not to go past your pencil line so you're not making things bigger than they need to be. nice thin line should go pretty quickly okay so there's our peppermint stripes along the outer edge and so now we're going to take a um, I'm going to take a well, let's see all right so i've got my lines on here they're all dry let's um, erase back our line here you can leave it barely showing if you want, but you really want to have the majority of the line erased. You know where you're going because you've got the edge of your red and green lines that are going to tell you exactly where you need to go. So let's brush that away from our paint. Okay, so now we want to float inside here, and we're going to use soft black. So. Uh, with soft black, you need to um, get it as sheer as you can because it can it can overtake. So first, wake up your brush, get it full of water, lay it on your paper towel to wick out the excess. We're going to get a tiny, tiny little bit on the toe of this brush, and we're going to work it in with the water that's in our brush. And if you don't have water in it, get some water in it by spritzing the side of your palette with water with a small spritzing bottle. This is just a travel mister. And then you can go over there and pick up water. So you can go right over here, pick up a couple of drops of water and go right here and work into your brush along with that paint. So we've got a nice sheer color. This might be a little bit too sheer. I'm going to pinch right there on that water edge. And then we're going to go in here and start loading this color that's a little darker than I like but we'll go with it pick up more water and a tiny little bit of paint and I'm going to go all the way around this with a soft black right next to what we painted And if you don't have the water in your brush, you're not going to be able to move that paint. Now you can use an angle brush, you know, if you prefer to float with an angle brush. Whatever brush is your favorite is the one that you should use. I ran out of water and paint. Too much paint now, so let me pick up some water. I'm doing a very, very light touch here. I'm not pushing hard at all with my brush because I don't want to leave down tons and tons of paint here. Oh, wrong side. So let me clean my brush, grab some water, a little bit of paint. Too much water, too much paint. I just need a little tiny bit of paint. The soft black is very powerful. It can get dark very quickly. So
but you have to have that water in there, keeping it on the softer side. dark and hard right there but okay and then we're going to take our liner brush and we're going to go into some white so if you need to thin your white you need to thin it with some clean water don't thin it with your dirty water and we're going to add a highlight all the way around up on the tip of your, I'm using my uh, 10 o liner so you can have a pretty thin line here so you're not filling up the whole area. Okay, so we've got our highlight on there. I think that looks pretty good. Now we're going to add glamour dust on the outside of this, but we're not going to add the glamour dust until we get um, done with everything else. So now you can see the difference between the two stripes. Here I did a more cur curvy stripe, and here I did a more just solid over the edge stripe. I really like them both. This is probably my favorite look, but it's really a personal preference there. The pattern will have it like this. I thought I'd show you this one in case you wanted to change it up a little bit. It's just like a little S. You're just making, let me show you on my palette here. You're just making a little bitty S stroke. So you're going to start here and end here. So you're going to go over and over and end right there. So it's just a little a little less stroke. You're starting out flat and ending flat. Okay? And depending on how big your brush is, how um, full you fill it, and how much pressure you give, it depends on how much, how wide your stripe will be. Okay? So that's if you want to do an S stroke on yours. Alright, so I have my uh, edges done on both sides so you can choose whichever side looks um, more appealing for you and make that the top now I have made my pattern out three ways so I've got just the candle to put on here and then I'll add my holly or it's done all as one piece there so I'm going to um, lay out the candle where I want it So I can make sure I've got my holly where I need it to go. I'm going to put my candle where the flame is pretty much in the center. This edge we don't have to really worry a lot about. It's going to be covered up by our holly right there. But I want to paint my candle in separate. Now you don't have to do it this way. You can um, lay everything out here and draw it all in at the same time. Transfer it all in at the same time. So I'm going to push very lightly up here on the flame because I don't want it to be super dark. And then we'll just add our shape in. So we've got our candle shape and it's ready to go. So I want to paint it in before we add the leaves on top. I want to get the base coating of it in. <clears throat> and it's going to be Santa Red. <clears throat> Excuse me. Santa Red. And it will take a couple of coats to completely cover this. You know, get good coverage. 
So add a little bit of water to your paint. Keep your shape really nice. And this is just basic base coating. Start out here and work in, in the middle and work your way out to the edge. A little bit of water in your paint helps it to have good flow. And I'll let this dry and I'll apply a second coat on here. get good coverage on it. Okay, so um, I have my two coats on. I went ahead and transferred only the leaves on here. You got Make sure your red paint is completely dry or your, your uh, design won't transfer on. So I want to tuck some dark color in around this stuff. So I'm going to take some soft black and some red and um, make a really dark red and I want to tuck that in around the leaves. I'm not going to worry if I get it on my leaves or it's a little messy because the berries um, and the leaves is going to cover a lot of this up but if any of it is peeking through at all when we get done we want to make sure that it is dark back in here. So just kind of go around your design and just tap a little bit in there and darken it up. Most of it's going to be covered up so don't get too stressed out about that. Okay so let's take a, um, a either an angle brush, flat brush, whatever you like to float with and we're going to take some of that dark red mix and load our brush up with it. F load it for a float so it's on one side and we're going to go down this edge and around our leaves here. A little bit more paint on my brush. around our leaves it's okay if I get over the leaves a little bit I can either put my pattern lines back in or just when I paint them in I can just create how they're going to look. I'm going to walk that over a little bit. So we've kind of gone around the leaves and put a little bit on this side. Now I want this to come out a little bit farther but I've got to let it dry. So I'm going to put a little bit, we're going to create a little bit of a well up in here. So I want to tuck some of this down in this well. Get it a little bit dark down in there. Get my shape good here. I'm messing it up. Okay, that's dry so I'm going to come back over here on this side. A lot of water in my brush with my paint so that I can move that paint over. I'm going to very gently mop because I don't want to remove any of that. Okay, so now we are ready to paint our leaves and stuff in. I think we'll go ahead and finish out the candle though. Go ahead and get the highlights done. 
and then we'll come down here and do our leaves. Okay, so our highlight is going to be Tangelo Orange. So we're going to go along this edge. Take some of the water out of my brush. Kind of walk that over and go around this well. That's our first highlight on there. While it's drying, let's paint our wick in. And it's going to be soft black. Get my liner brush out here. And I'm just going to come up from the well. Let me zoom in just a little bit. And right into the flame there. Brighten our highlight. We're going to mix tangelo orange and white. Um, two tangelos to one white. that dry. Now if you mess up any of your your um, outside edges here, um, since we have a white background we can just go in and touch up and smooth out our edges if we need to. And I really need to bring that highlight closer onto that edge so we don't have that red, red line right there. To, needs to touch the whole it, red edge right there. Don't leave any of the red showing. A little bit of white. Touch that up. Just got paint all over this thing. Okay, we're going to brighten up our highlight now. We're going to use just white this time. And create a little bit of a highlight along this edge. Just a tiny bit of white on my brush, and it might fade back down in there. We might have to come and brighten that highlight again. But that kind of tells you where we're going with our highlight. I think I'm going to add a little bit of a highlight back here on this edge. I don't know how well we'll see it with the white background, but we'll kind of get a little look going back there. Okay, let's finish out our wick here. So our wick, um, we're going to take our Santa Red and work it into our brush to where it's a very, very soft color. We've got water in our brush, a little bit of paint, and we're going to work it in. Wipe a little bit of the paint off, grab a little bit more water, and continue to work it. We've got a nice sheer color. Now I want it just a touch darker, so I'm going to get a little bit, tiny little bit of soft black, 
and just darken that. And we're going to put this at the base of our candle, or our wick, our flame, I guess I should say. Wash out your brush, and then load a, side load a little bit of orange, the same way we did the red, kind of watery. And we're just going to work that orange into the top. let it kind of blend with that red. You need to do it while it's wet, so you've got to have water in your brush to do that floating or it's not going to um, turn out the way that you want it to turn out. So now we're ready to base in our leaves. So uh, we're going to base in our leaves with leaf green. I'm going to go off camera and do that because it is just simple base coating. And we're going to get them all based in and then come back and work on the leaves. Okay, so when you're doing these leaves, I thought I'd just show you uh, the last one I'm doing here. You're just going to outline the leaf like that. Using a one round is all I'm using, and then fill in. And you'll have to get two coats to get good coverage over this red. So this is, this is finishing up my first coat. So I'm going to go let it dry and get my second coat on. And we'll come back and finish out these leaves. Okay, before we move on to adding detail to our leaves, um, I want to wash some Santa Red over my candle. So I'm going to really thin it down with some water. Make a nice wash of it. going to wash over the candle. I want this candle to remain pretty red. So I'm just wipe my brush off now. I'm just going to take what I put on here and move it over to this side. I'm going to touch back on the white so it removes a little bit of it. A little bit of the red that I put on there. So we just kind of washed over that to get it a little bit more red. And then we're going to um, take our white on our liner brush. And kind of put our highlights. a little more strongly on there. All right, let's move to our leaves. Our leaves, we're going to um, take our green and our soft black, our green and our soft black, just starting to dry a little bit touch over here because I probably have more soft black than I want. And we're going to make a dark green. Almost a black green. So just add a little bit of soft black at a time to get it to a nice dark green. A little bit darker. There we go. That's a nice dark green right there. I like that. So we're going to put this at the base of our leaves and on the left sides. So just use, if you're using an angle brush, just use like a quarter inch angle brush. I'm going to get this just a tiny bit darker here. 
I'm using a, a fairly good size brush so I'm staying up a little bit on the tip so we're, we're going and that one I should have done on the other side we're going mostly on the the shaded sides which will be the left side or the bottom side a little bit more. I just brush mix. I just mix mix it on my brush as I need it. And this one kind of goes underneath that one. So we'll kind of shade around that particular leaf. And then we have one more here. Yeah, I probably should put that shading on the other side, but what is done is done. And I'm not going to change it, so if you get it on an opposite side, don't worry about it. Just leave it. Don't worry about changing it. Um, let me smooth this edge out just a little bit. Okay, and then remember if we get, you know, out of lines and we don't like anything, we can touch up with our white. Okay, so um, that's our shading. We're going to get ready to highlight on the leaves next. All right, let's um, add our highlight on here, and we're going to do that with olive green. Now, I've, I've moved to a different brush. This is a six uh, chisel brush, a La Cornell. Um, because it's got shorter bristles and I can control how the paint is on it a little bit easier. Spritz my palette with water. We always got to have clean water ready when we're floating. We're going to load the corner of our toe, the corner of our brush, the toe of our brush, the tip of our brush, one side of the brush, however you want to say it. It's just on one edge. And this will look extremely bright when we first put it on, but um, I love olive green. It will fade down in there so you don't have to um, worry about it being too bright. So we're going to go on the opposite side and create our highlight. Up more water and paint and blend them both together on my brush. Zoom in just a little bit closer. So this one lays on top of that one, so we want to do this whole edge here. More water and paint. Blend them. I pick up each. I pick the water up on the water edge and the paint up on the paint edge, and then I blend them on my brush. It's very important to blend them together. So there's our highlight on there with the olive green. We're going to brighten that in a minute, but we want to add our vein in the center first. All right, so we're going to mix our green and our black like we did for the shading color. So I've got my uh, liner brush, my 10-0 liner. I dipped it in water. Now I'm dipping into the green, I'm dipping into the soft black, and I'm mixing them together to make that really dark green. Oh, yeah. Okay, touch your brush to your paper towel and then just go in here and stroke your veins in. Okay, 
Pretty easy little thing to do. We're not going to do much more than that. We're going to add just a brighter highlight on a few of them. But uh, we're really not going to do too much more than that. So we're going to take our olive green and some white. And olive green again. So maybe two olive green and one white. Not sure I got any olive green there. We just want a lighter color of olive green. We'll see if this is light enough. And just on a couple of these. Now we don't want to do them all. We just want to pick some places to add a brighter highlight on there. And maybe on this one down here I need some water. Paint isn't wanting to move on my brush so I still had paint on my brush, but it wasn't wanting to move, so I needed to pick up water and blend it on my brush. Yeah, I think we'll do a little bit over here. So that is our a little bit brighter highlight on some of those. So then you can just go into straight white. And then, let me see. Actually, I think I'm going to use my liner for that. So, let me grab my liner. And I'll go into some straight white. And just add a little bit. Where we put some of that brighter highlight, we'll add some white on there. I think that was all I did. I'm not sure I even did that one. So, just whichever ones that you did with the uh, the brightest highlight. Those are the ones that you want to add the um, the white onto. Okay, we're going to get ready to base our berries in. So you're going to need some tangelo orange out on your palette. So on our berries, tangelo orange is uh, kind of transparent, so we're going to mix it with some white. So we're just going to take some orange and some white, just dip into each one, and mix it over here. It's going to make just a lighter orange color. We just need to, to make the orange more opaque. Now this is just for our first, our undercoating. Um, I eventually want the berries to be more orange. So now this is where you can lay your pattern back on or just grab your chalk pencil and draw some circles in where you want to have some berries. So let's see, I'll do one there and there and there and one out here and one here and then there's a whole bunch right through here. So. You can just kind of fill this area in with some berries. That's why we're not going to see really um, much, if any, of this, uh, the bottom edge of our candle. It should be pretty much completely covered up. So we've got just like a big cluster of, of berries right inside the center there. And so we want to paint all of our berries in with this uh, orange and white mix. Okay, so this is our undercoating here. And then our, our base color will come back after these dry and just do um, tangelo orange on top of it. So, add a little bit of water. Paint them in real quick. This should not take you very long at all to do. It should be a fairly quick process. So I think that is uh, pretty good for our first coat. We need to let that dry and then uh, come back over it with the tangelo orange. So I'm going to get mine dry so I can do that. And we'll be ready to add a little bit of shading on here. 
I've got my uh, I've got my tangelo orange second coat on there. So the first coat was the mix of the white and the tangelo orange, and then just tangelo orange. So our berries should look mostly orange when you're done. So we want to put a little bit of shading on here. Now, if you are if you are really good with a flat brush, I did my original one with a flat brush. But if you um, feel uncomfortable getting a flat brush on these tiny little berries, we're just going to use this round brush. So let's mix some red and black. And we want it more on the red side, not on the black side there. It's just a, a dark red. Or you could just use straight straight red. Let me see what I put down in my instructions. I did do the uh, the black the soft black mixed in there so you just want to take a little bit of this and put it on one side of your berry let's get a little bit of water in there so we're not so part of the line so you can just kind of pick which side of your berry is dark side Put a little bit on it. If you wanted to, you could, well, it's hard to double load a round brush though, you could double load and put an orange on one side and this dark mix on the other side and paint them in, but that, that is a little bit tricky to do. So just get a little bit of that red in there. And then we're going to add a little dot highlight of white. Just a little dot will do ya. You don't have to do them all if you don't want to. I'm, I'm going to do them all, but you don't have to. Okay, and then I want to take that tangelo orange and create a little wash of it. So I'm going to get my dip my brush in water, then dip in paint and blend the two together out here to create a little bit of a wash. And then I'm just going to put that over all of my berries. You can go right over that highlight dot or you can wait and add it later. It's not going to hurt anything at all. There's our berries. If you feel like you lost your highlight, I would just pick a few and brighten that highlight back up. Maybe the ones that might get a little bit more light on them. Just add a, a few little brighter highlights on there. Maybe not fill the whole berry. Just a little dot will do ya. Okay, we're almost done with this project. We want to do some shading underneath all of this with our soft black like we did around the outer edges. So I'm going to zoom you back out for that part. Well, actually, I didn't need to zoom you out. I just needed to lay it down. So we're going to 
uh, load for a float, which is water. In your, you put water in your brush, touch it to your paper towel, pick up your paint, and then work it in. A little bit too much water, touch your paper towel, pick up some paint, go right back here because you need the water. You just didn't need maybe quite that much water. Okay, I'm going to touch my paper towel because I don't really want a lot of that soft black to come off on here. And I'm just going to go around the bottom of this and I'm going to use the water edge of my brush to kind of bring it out and do what it needs to do. Put a little bit over here. Not much shadow on this side, so. And that's just a hair too much over here, so I am going to dampen that. I really just want it underneath the elements, not spread way out. water and your white eraser and you can remove that paint because it was just a, a watery paint and it's not you know set in there yet so we don't have to worry about you know it being cured because it's not cured yet okay now we get to do our fun stuff well to me it's it's fun stuff the painting is is fun but when you get to add your your Finishing little details is what really makes it fun. So we're going to take some Glamour Dust Ice Crystal. My favorite product. And we're going to apply this on our um, all of our peppermint. And I will do two coats. Do two nice, generous coats. And you can varnish right over this and it should retain all of its glitter and shine. But if you feel like it takes it down, which I've never felt that, but if you feel like it takes it down, you can apply another coat right on top of your varnish. All the way around. Let me white angle you out just a little bit so we can get the whole star in the shot there. We're going to do both sides with two coats of this, and then we've got one more thing we're going to do to the back. We're going to do our berries with this. We're going to do our flame with this. Christmas time, you got to have some sparkle in there. Any chance I get to apply some little blinging going on? On my designs, I am loving it. All right, let's put some on our flame. And then I'll come in with my round brush and put some on all of my berries. Every single one of them. Oh my gosh. I just love this product. And it comes in a lot of colors, but the ice crystal is my favorite. It is my absolute favorite. Okay, so I've got to get this dry. And then I'm going to apply a second coat. We're going to flip it over. We're going to do the peppermint on the back side with two coats of glamour dust and then we'll finish up the back with um, uh, a stamped message. Okay, I've got these side by side to show you the difference in the varnishes so that you can choose what varnish that you would like. This one is my original one and I uh, varnished it with a high gloss varnish. It's very shiny. I still retain all my bling and my glitter which I love.
You can still see all my glittery stuff down there. It's not quite dry, so I'm not going to touch it. And then this one I did with satin varnish, which is generally what I use on most of my products on my designs. Um, this, I can feel the glitter along the edge, but I don't feel like it is sparkly enough for me. So right on top of this varnish, I'm going to add another coat of my Glamour Dust because we can just add that right on top. We don't have to come back and varnish over it if we don't want to. And then I did the uh, Glamour Dust on both sides. So, you can get that sparkle in there. There you go. Um, so I will do the same when I varnish the back. I will come back when it's dry and add a another coat of Glamour Dust on there just because I like that extra bling. Now I'm making a whole set of these so um, I'm going to grab another one after I get this done because the varnish is not quite dry and now the Glamour Dust is not dry. And I want to show you how I did the back of mine. So I'm going to set this one aside, and this one will, I will set aside in just a second. I have not varnished the back of it, but on this side of it, I stamped a uh, stamp that I purchased, this one, and it did not quite come off. No matter how many times I stamped it on paper, it did not come off very well on that stamp, so I was not too happy about it. So then I went to this stamp that I purchased and um, it still did not stamp very well. This was the third stamping. This was the first one, the second one, the third one. Maybe if I continue, because this was a brand spanking new stamp, but um, I wasn't too happy with it. I wasn't sure it was gonna fit on the back. Anyway, so I'm gonna go to a stamp out of this set. This is a set I've had probably at least 15 years. It's an old Stampin' Up! set. Um, I, they probably don't even make this one anymore, but I want you to do on the back what you want to do on the back. So I'm going to take one of my other ones that I started and stamp the back of this. Now you can put holly leaves and berries on the back. You can leave it white, just like it is there. You don't have to put anything on the back. You can paint another candle on the other side, so if it swings around on the tree, you can see a candle no matter what. You can uh, make it to, from, make it a tag for a gift. You can um, stencil on it, uh, snowflakes, berry leaves, you know, what holly and berry, berries, um, what, whatever that you have is what I want you to use because what I'm using is a copyright thing and so I can't put this part in the packet. So I just want you to know that it will not be in the packet. The back is going to be totally up to you. I'm just giving you an option on something to do for the back. And I really liked that bigger stamp on the back. Which one was it? This one? Because it really filled up the back. I, I just loved that. But um, I, this stamp I have used many times on cards and different um, projects and ornaments that I've made in the past. I've used this, this stamping this particular stamp that says Merry Christmas I've used a lot. Now whether I can get it straight or not is the thing because it's not on a see-through piece. So I'm gonna try and do this without getting my head in the camera here. And hopefully I am going to stamp this straight. Oh, it didn't stamp very well. Probably because I didn't clean it off. So, no worries. If you do that, now you could varnish this first and then stamp because if your stamp doesn't come out right then you can um, wipe it off of the varnish that's on top. But I'm just going to take my white eraser and erase that. And I can base coat back over it with some white paint. Not a big deal. I do not want you to stress out if you do something like this and it doesn't turn out the way that you want. Remember, it's just paint. So this one I could go back and paint right over that with some white paint and um, figure out something else to do on the back of it. So I'm going to touch the white up on this one. 
some white paint. I did get all the way down into my my wood there. So just slap some white paint in there, smooth it out, blend it out a little bit, and cover up your red. And take a couple of coats to cover that where I took it off of there. So next one. Let's see what kind of damage I can do here. It, the uh, stamp came off very well on the um, paper when I stamped it on the paper. I don't know what the deal is, why it won't stamp on the wood as well, but we're going to try it again. I'm going to stamp on the paper first. Very beautiful on the paper, of course. A more red paint out. It's just our red that we used in the project. I don't want to get it too thick on here because I don't want it to smear. Which it might. If it messes up on this one, then I'm just going to paint some holly leaves and berries on the back. Just want you to know. Give it some firm pressure, hopefully throughout the whole stamp. Oops. Well, that came off a little bit better. My stamp got stuck to the paint, and I actually lifted the paint off. That is crazy. I've never had that happen before, ever. So I'm going to clean this stamp. That one I'm going to leave. It, it's good enough for me to give. So... Um, so clean your stamp off with a baby wipe and I think what I'm going to do on the other ones is um, allow I'm going to varnish them first and then stamp because I think the uh, stamp might work better on a varnished surface I'll give it a shot I've really never had trouble with a, a stamp stamping on an ornament that I've done before this is the first first struggle I've ever had so you're seeing me with my struggles and um, it's a learning process so don't ever freak out if something um, didn't go exactly like you planned a lot of beautiful things happen with happy mistakes so although in this case not so much but it, you know it's a uh, it's it's just paint so uh, you know don't stress out so this one's got a nice Merry Christmas on the back and this one has a somewhat light saying on the back of it so we're gonna go with the Merry Christmas I think on the rest of them because I think that just looks cute on the back and um, I think that is gonna be it for this project because there won't be anything else but varnishing it and adding uh, whatever you want to use for a hanger on the top so um, this project I think was a lot of fun and here's the one I painted for you this is this was my uh, sample one that I did, and here's the one that I painted for you. The only difference is is the way that I did the peppermints out here. This one I made those S's, and then this one I just came right around, just made the the curve right around the edge. And I like them both; they're both beautiful. So whichever way you go with it, you won't go wrong. So um, I hope that you enjoyed painting this one and that you'll paint many ornaments like this. This is just going to be a wonderful, quick little ornament to paint and give away. And uh, give me a thumbs up if you like this video and uh, ask any questions that you need to ask. I'm always happy to answer questions and help fellow painters. I want you to um, grow in your painting journey. So anything I can do to help, I'm always happy to help. And uh, I, I can't wait to see your painted ornaments so please post pictures or send me pictures however is convenient for you but uh, I love seeing everyone's work and I loved painting this with you so I'll see you guys on the next one thanks so much everybody